in these courses and um, trying to capture something about the light. And um, so while I'm getting set up here, um, I'd love it if you would chat and or write a comment and let me know uh, who you are and where you're watching from. And as always, your questions and comments are very welcome. So this is an oil painting demo. And we'll start with mapping in. So if you don't know me yet, uh, my name is Jesse Rashi. I am a portrait and landscape painter living in uh, South Dakota. And um, I focus on painting um, moms and babies. Uh, I'm doing a project right now called the portraits of love and um, anyone can submit photos uh, and um, and I look through those and decide which ones to um, to paint from so uh, let me know if you want more information about that but so I, I paint moms and babies and then also a lot of landscapes with um, horses and birds and cows and um, really trying to capture that peaceful feeling that you get from being around these animals so, and if you're watching on the um, replay uh, please also comment out and let me know uh, who you are and where you're watching from and I read all the comments and respond to those <laughs> good morning Chris so today I'm live streaming on both uh, YouTube and Facebook so um, uh, in the past I've mainly just gone live on um, YouTube, but I've been trying out Facebook. It's uh, it's interesting for some reason. Facebook makes me way more nervous, <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna just get some basics mapped in. I want my horizon line to be pretty high, and I love this. Um, the sky poking through. I want that to be an interesting shape. My tree is kind of sized properly here. <laughs> so how is Seattle today? South Dakota is uh, warm and muggy and uh, actually pretty pleasant. It has a little bit of that sauna feeling, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, yeah, fine. it would be perfect beach weather. Okay, so I'm just kind of looking around for um, what I want to emphasize here. I love this tree in the background. I'm going to push that back with the colors in a minute. And then the trees on both sides of the scene that kind of um, are like little bookends here. And I don't know how I feel about that. 
And also these bushes are very regular. We'll see how I can break that up a little bit, make it kind of interesting. Looking for the bright kind of bluish green to push these trees back and well, this tree right here is going to be the focal point of the whole painting. I, uh, I love that. It's you know, there's something really nice about the about the branches and everything about that. <laughs> uh, so yeah chris says uh cool and gray <laughs> the chance of rain and uh yeah, that's good weather it's nice It's been kind of overcast here. Uh, this great kind of beautiful foggy atmospheric effects in the mornings. Uh, and then it burns off and it's bright blue. <laughs> so this bush right in front here. Mm, I don't think I like that. At least I don't like it right there. I'm just going to not have that there. So there's this tree here and then this other stuff. These are the trees from behind. I'm going to emphasize that, that there's something behind and then, you know, that this is its own separate tree here. And I was, it, it seems funny when you, know, you describe this photo and it's a photo of some horses and, um, and those guys might go in kind of last as, uh, more of design elements. Um, I'll get a little bit more depth of pushing this right back in. And the space is probably going to need to break up a little bit. I 
Così c'è. So it's the bushes in the foreground. Uh, a lot more um, value difference than the ones in the background. So I'm going to really make sure to capture that well. And I think I'm just going to ignore that metal fencing. Cool. Let's see what this one is. Trying to decide how to break up this bank of bushes. Um, over here, there's a bush that's kind of more in the foreground. Right about there for just kind of breaking up the space. So there's uh, this really nice variety in the ground plane, uh, different blues and greens. And uh, so I'm working on loose canvas again here. And really liking doing that. It gives so much freedom for um, being able to make choices later on. It's, I think it's one of the really nice advantages of using watercolors and that sort of thing is being able to, um, or just working on paper in general, is being able to kind of crop in later. And with the loose canvas, it's so much easier to do that.
Let this tree come forward a little bit. Look at some a variety here, some pinks and some different uh, colors kind of leading in here. <laughs> you can hear the dogs back there. Save up all their drinking time for <laughs> for wet time. So this is a really bright green. It's my cadmium yellow and, and phthalo blue, which I have brought back for um, trying to get some of this distance in here. And I'm getting rid of this sky hole in the middle of this um, closer tree just because uh, like it would be distracting. It's not really my focal point here. And a small area that's so much brighter than everything else would really draw the eye. Um, Uh, bye, Chris. Have a nice morning walk. Okay, and so there's some overlapping happening here that hasn't been explained very well yet.
shifting the values so it uh, makes more sense. And now for some really fun yellowish greens. So welcome if you just joined. I am painting this South Dakota landscape with some horses and trees and really trying to capture this beautiful light. Excuse me. And put the lighter grass bronze right on top of these grasses. I'll darken this up a little bit so it can be a nice shadow for that. Some of these pink grass at the tops that come right in here. So welcome, and if you haven't said hi yet, um, please say hello and let me know where you're watching from. Jordan, good morning or good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Love it. Oh, Garish, good afternoon. Cars, hi. <laughs> I'm just laying in the, um, the basic colors. And the thing I'm really chasing after today is the lighting. Um, and so I'm trying to lay in some foundation and then I can 
to really see what I can do about bringing this, the light from the sky down into the picture. I've, um, I'm always surprised by how loud this palette knife scratching sounds in the recordings. So I'm sorry if that is uh, <laughs> just ridiculously loud. <laughs> Oh yeah, I um I set up so Cars mentioned she didn't see when this started today. I set up my um YouTube thing a little bit differently. I'm not sure if it notified people. Uh, I've been doing this for a couple months now, but I still feel like um such a learning curve. Of, uh, just trying to figure out how the technology works and how to make sure people know and I'm live and what color yeah that um that the brightness to it oh um so yeah I'm using oil paint right now and um and I'm diluting it with uh, this stuff. Uh, it's a nice, it's a nice medium. Um, acrylic paint. I was painting with acrylics just yesterday, and they can be diluted in water um, or in an acrylic medium. And um, and so, uh, yeah, you'll be seeing acrylic paints on my channel more. Um, I've been working on my portraits in acrylic uh, just just this last week and so um, and so I think you'll be seeing that really soon. Um, yeah that is that is actually, I think, the main benefit of acrylic is that it's, you can dilute it in water. Um, and then there are water-soluble oils, which I've heard have come a long ways. When I first tried them, they, um, they weren't very good yet. It was right after they'd come out, and it seemed like they didn't really have the regular benefits of oil or acrylic um, but I've heard that that they're actually really good now um, and, uh, but with any of these paints except for watercolor you're um, you don't want to dilute them too much or it um, it uh, makes it harder for it to stick. Um, which is why you would bother with the medium for acrylics when it seems like water would uh, just be easier and cheaper and everything, but um, that you don't really want to just dilute it with a lot of water it, um, it, it interferes with it sticking down. Okay. I'm just going to try to get this value a little bit closer. It's too dark. And um, get my sky in and then uh, well, maybe it's time for some of those horses. And, uh, 
excuse me for jiggling the camera here. As always, I have the camera on top of where I keep my paints. And um, <laughs> so I try to load up in advance, but um, I, I just always go through so much weight. Gonna lighten this whole thing, this whole area right here up a little bit. brush to the sky. It looks like this blue trying to poke through the clouds. It's just on the verge of being blue, but it's not. So I'm going to try to show how this tree is in front of this one back here. And some of this step with this bush. I like the jumble of all the trees, but I want some distinction here. Try to hang on to that brush for my <laughs> sky color for as long as possible.
that much. There we go. Have to put a little bit warmer for it also settle. Some sky right in here. This is, you can tell this is one of those weird, well used brushes. <laughs> I'm getting my values here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you, Cars. Which color uh, reflects the light more? Um, yeah. Do you mean um, oils versus acrylics? Or... Uh... uh Not, I'm not quite sure how to answer the which color reflects more light. Um, um, so uh, <laughs> let me know if uh, if you mean oils versus acrylics, or if you mean more of uh, you know white or different colors. Um, here um a little bit more of that grass plane and then down here this is a little bit stronger than what i intended i'm going to bring this up a little bit um, yeah, for oils versus acrylics, one of the things that stands out a lot is that um, a lot of acrylic paintings are 
um, just brighter than oil paintings and um, and the colors um, they feel less waxy well they're they're it's a plastic rather than um, being suspended in oil and so um, it doesn't have the acrylic paints by themselves without additives don't really have that um, like subtle waxy feeling um, although there there are different additives that do all kinds of things to it um, but left on their own just straight oil paint versus straight acrylic paint the acrylic paint is um, generally brighter um, but um, but you can really use either one um, you know depending on your style if like I tend to like very subtle colors and um, and so most of my acrylic paintings kind of reflect that and um, you know I, I mix the paints to be not all that bright <laughs> kind of more subtle um, but um, but there are some oil painters who really like to paint like extremely vivid uh, colors and um, you know and they manage to do that so um, I'm not sure if that answers your question or not but um, but also cars is right there is I think almost a whole minute delay um, for um, for when I say thanks and when they go out and also there's a delay for um, when I actually see your comments so thanks for being patient And if you'd ever be interested in seeing um, seeing me paint sort of the same thing using oils and then using acrylic paint and kind of see what what the difference is for uh, you know how I use it, I'd be happy to do that. I uh, actually just did an experiment like that a couple days ago. Um, I'm trying to make some decisions about. Um, how I'm going to um, how I'm pursuing a new series and uh, so it's it is kind of fun to see what the difference is and um, I think acrylic paint um, it reminds me a lot of watercolor you know being a water based paint um, and uh, and so uh, I'm like, when I use it I'm more inclined to um, kind of have splashes and <laughs> things like that in in the paint uh, Okay, so Gear says, I always have problem while to draw sun or sunlight. Oh, um, yeah, that's, that's an interesting question. And I think, um, uh, I think a lot of it has to do with how all of the colors work together and um and uh, you know you can have 
just something really bright or you could have it kind of saturate through and it has a very different effect. Um, that's really interesting. Um, and uh, I think that's a, it's a big question. It's a big question. Um, and, and I think, um, you know, there isn't necessarily one answer. I think it depends an awful lot on, um, on what the specific painting is that you're trying, that you're, that you're working on. Um, it's depending on the, um, the atmosphere and, and the colors of the scene. Um, you might take kind of a different approach. Um, but, uh, yeah. And you're welcome to, um, if you have a certain kind of thing you're, you're working on, um, you're welcome to tag me on Facebook or Instagram or something like that and uh, show me what it is and I'm happy to do demos that are geared towards people's specific um, you know questions or what you're what you're working on just trying to bring the light down into um, those trees back there. A little bit of a push and pull here. Darken this up quite a bit so it can kind of stand up against that light. I don't want to lose its place in the you know that it's behind other things, these things right here, but um, I do want it to stand up a little bit better against this light coming through. And... <laughs> oh no! <laughs> 20 minutes is quite a long time yeah and also um you know sometimes i'm, I'm focused on painting and uh yeah they yeah i try to look over there but sometimes i, I don't look over as often as i should but, yeah well i wonder if trying to cast to two different places changes it also So I'm trying to bring in some darks here to um, to let this still be behind um, Soften these up in a sack, but yeah. Get my value in here to start with. I've been pretty confounded by the by the chats. Um, sometimes it seems like um you know, I don't see them until it's really late. 
And then sometimes it seems like they work really well. I'm not sure what that's about. Oh, yeah, so, um, internet problems are so frustrating. Huh? We, um, we live out in the county, and so, um, our internet options are pretty limited, and, um, our internet now works really well but um just getting it set up in the first place was pretty weird and i know I'm, I'm sure in some places it's much more challenging than it is here but because we're like one block out of the city limits um when i called the place that sets up internet for people in the city limits um they just never came. They said they'd come and check it out. And then I called a week later to say, hey, did you come and, and see if we're in the area that you'll um, you know, have internet for? <laughs> and they just said, oh, yeah, we drove by. We, did, we don't serve that area. So <laughs> we just never bothered to call. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I guess in the scope of things, that's not, uh, you know, it's not a great hardship. But I just thought, wow. <laughs> <laughs> These people really don't need my business. <laughs> uh, and, uh, but it's weird thinking about, you know, how life was before any internet at all. Um, uh, trying to get the play of the dark and the mid value and the light shining through here and um, I love this color. It's always dangerous to kind of fall in love with the color and uh, it makes it a lot harder for me to judge if that's what the painting needs. <laughs> it's like, oh, I love it. It's, I don't know. A lot of times it's the thing that I love the most that has to be wiped out of a painting to make it really work. But I'm sure it's really hard for people that have like actual internet issues and not just uh, 
you know, a little annoying like ones like we've had. some of the one stuff back here that really draws me to this tree and, uh, there we go I want it to be implied but not completely specific and it's time to have some fun here with this horse. And I'm going to put the red one in and turn to this side where exactly that guy goes. <laughs> I'm tempted to put him right in the middle. Uh, I feel like some balance could be had right here, or possibly right down here. Give it a shot right there and uh, you can always move So I've heard some different things about um, mixing, or you know, read different things. Okay, I'm gonna put them in right, right there. Um, about mixing bright colors and um, especially for people with styles where um, where you're really going for um, more saturated color um, and if you currently mix like if you're trying to make a purple and you want it to be slightly more dulled um, doing that by um, mixing uh, different primary colors to get your purple rather than trying to mix in the complementary color can um, you know it, it can really have an impact on how bright your colors feel um, by which I mean, if you're mixing your purple with your brightest purpliest blue and your brightest purpliest red, and then it turns out too bright and purpley, um, just try using different blue and a different red before you try um, before you try dulling it down in a different way. And uh, you know, and then avoid using black as a darkening agent. And those things will make your colors so much brighter. Let me get some proportions in here. And 
might come in and add some different values in a minute, make you know, sh shadows and highlights, but I just want to make sure I get the basic proportions first. This is my really hard bristle brush, so I can just wipe paint right back off with it. Okay. And the thing that always kind of cracks me up with painting animals is that the proportions are so specific. Um, You know, the shoulder's a little too far back in there, but giraffe. <laughs> um, if the head is too big, I'm going to have a cow. And Bring some background in here and adjust the shape. Hello. Hello, welcome back. Oh, no water <laughs> Good? Good. Very tiny here. Colors. Okay, a little bit of shadow. And so if you are watching this on Facebook and you want to see um, more of my painting demos, um, you are welcome to sign up for my demo notifications. Just message me um, and I will um, get those to you. And, uh, I am planning on continuing on YouTube. I'm 
I'm sort of torn about Facebook. about whether I'll keep uh, doing demos on Facebook. Okay. A little teeny paintbrush. Oh, cool. Thanks, Chris. I will, I will do that. An acrylic um, and oil paint comparison. Um, Nice little step here. Let's capture that and then this the fun tail flick. I, uh, there's been a lot of construction right down the street from our house and um, <laughs> It took me a while to realize that that meant that the cows that used to live there have moved, um, which I think is sad. They were so, it was, it was nice having cows right next door, but, um, but the horses are still there for now. There's a, so, well, let's see how long that lasts. But. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what's going on with our town all winter. Uh, maybe not all winter, but while it was still very cold this winter and all spring, it's been just massive construction. Seems like there's new new buildings every time I every time I go out. I just don't know what's in town that can support all that uh, all, all the new um, homes and uh, apartments and things. But it also means that, um, you know, the places where I was finding pictures of um, of cows and horses are kind of pushing out of town now. They're further, further away. Okay.
So hopefully all the farmers get a good deal out of that. All the, the people that have been pushed further out. Flashy tail here. It's going to use a real warm light on the tail and the nose stripe. So, um, I'm just going to get a little bit more of a value difference here and um, with the grasses bring this a little bit darker and a little bit warmer. Shadows. So yeah, maybe I'll do that on, on um, I'll do that on my next uh, painting demo. I'll, I'll do something a simple painting of a bird or something like that in um, oil and acrylic right next to each other, and just kind of go for really showing what each one is good at. Kirish, if, if there's something specific, um, since I'm not, I'm not sure I totally answered your question well about light, so you're welcome to um, 
send me a picture and uh, kind of let me know. Like if I if I if I didn't answer well, you're welcome to send me a picture and let me know what it is that you're um, you're working on and and what the question is and um, I'll see if I can um, answer it somewhat better in my next uh, demo. So. Look, that helped a little bit. It was this mix right here was kind of bland and irritating. Um, separated a little bit. a point I come to in a lot of my paintings um, where it feels like uh, something is just frustrating my eyes and um, and then at some point it's like oh yeah that was it <laughs> that's better <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's a little bit of a yeah just a seeking to find what it is that is um you know really needs to be there and let's see I'm trying to get this light sensation I feel like I haven't quite done the thing I really wanted to do here which was to explore this light and And I really like this color here. I kind of will play that up and make sure not to lose it while I'm messing around here. That's kind of saying it more what I what I'm aiming for here. And if you look at the photo, it's just this subtle little shrub that you can tell is a teeny bit forward, but I don't know, I feel like it helps this whole composition quite a bit. Just the the row of shrubs here is so uniform. It's uh you know, it needs a little bit of something to break it up. Oh, thank you so much, Karis. <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate that. And this has a lot of that warmth. To it not quite so much as this guy. I'm gonna add some light in here, but not have it compete. 
getting really thick. It's, uh, And back here, same thing. Kind of easy to see the part up on the tape <laughs> as part of the painting. Yeah, and uh, remember the painting actually starts inside the canvas a little ways. It's kind of funny. It's not quite right. So um, if you're watching on Facebook and you would like to see more, um, you can message me or you can um, to get notifications or um, or you can sign up right there uh, to get notifications about my uh, live demos and like I said I'm I'm a little confl conflicted excuse me about um, going live on Facebook versus YouTube I don't know um, and uh, please like if you liked the demo and um, subscribe if you want to see more and um and thank you for the um <laughs> idea for next time that'll be a lot of fun just comparing oils and acrylics okay and uh this color on the grass i just Something isn't, I don't quite like it yet. Not on its own at least. I feel like it needs some variety. some a little bit of interest right here with the edges very lone figure here <laughs>
Well, I think I'm going to leave it right there today. Um, thanks so much for joining me, and I hope you have a great day. Uh, feel free to, if you're watching, um, if you're watching live, feel free to ask questions or post comments, and I'll be here for another minute. Um, and if you are watching later on, um, feel free to leave comments and I will check the comments and write back to you. So. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. I am so glad you like it. And uh, if anybody's down in the Sioux Falls area, um, I do have that solo show at the um, at the Washington Pavilion uh, South Dakota Gallery. So um, if you're in the Sioux Falls, Sioux Falls area, I hope you'll check that out. So it's my biggest solo show so far. And uh, and it's it's all about South Dakota. Have a wonderful day.